What's going on everybody? Welcome back to G Myers World and I've been getting a lot of questions since I put the video out about Midzone. Um, you know, G Myers, is it really worth it? What's the big difference? What does it do for my team? So those of you guys that are just getting into Madden 22 Ultimate Team, you're going to notice a drastic difference with the way that Next Gen allows the players to play zones. There's been a lot of crazy talk about it. Um, many things that have been going on within the game itself have not been very, very suitable as far as zones go. So there's been issues with it in that regard. What I would like you guys to understand is there's different ways to approach each thing when you play the game like there's always gonna be something wrong with every game that we play it's just the fact that you know with Madden it's always something so it's like yo all right I got great players I got the best possible players out there to play defense why are they not playing defense Jemaya my answer to that is I don't know because every you know every game is different right you know, some of you guys run a lot of man, some of you guys run zone, some of you guys are hybrid. So it could be, you know, it could be your user sometimes. It could be the fact that we picked the wrong play call. A lot of different things go into it, but the bottom line is the zone coverage, the players don't generally tend to play where we want them. But since we figured out the zone threshold, we've been pretty much a lot better overall. So look, I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. Um, this guy right here, Kyle Fuller, he gets to that 90 zone. Um, like I said, the only person on my team that doesn't meet the criteria of the threshold with the attributes is gonna go ahead and be Antrell Roll. He's like, like I said, he's he's like a confusing part to the whole system because he's only an 87 zone, but he'll pick you off and go for six with mid zone. All right, again, with mid zone, it's not acrobat, so the guys will not dive to pick the ball off, but they will knock it out, okay? Ed Reed, for the most part, today he was kind of doing whatever he wants, but for the most part, Ed Reed is always pretty solid, um, you know, handling it. And then obviously we have Sean Taylor. So some of you guys were asking for like, yo, G Maya, are you gonna give us some video uh, proof of what's going on? So what I did was I clipped a lot of the stuff that was going on in the games so that you guys can kind of see what's happening. Shout out to all of you guys that are following me over on Instagram at G Maya's World. You guys are the real MVPs. You guys some, saw some of those clips. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff at, uh, at G Maya's World. But I'm gonna show you right now in the video so we have the clips and it's gonna be easier for you guys to go ahead and just see what's going on right so I kind of I, I made them a little bit smaller uh, in size you know so that way you guys can see it really quickly kind of understand what's going on uh, this is one of them right here now the way that this play develops like the way that it's starting you see the you see how low down Ed Reed is that reaction that he does on this play is all mid zone because he's trying to beat me with a streak. And what happens is the streak is one of the more difficult things to cover. So you have to be able to have players out there that can react to the ball. So that reaction time right there, if you look at what it is, if you kind of, you see where uh, Ed Reed is, right? And you see that he's already lighting up, he's playing a deep third. And we know deep thirds don't work. And earlier in the year, that R1 streak would have beaten me. But if you watch what Ed Reed does in a simple third, he's, he's in a simple deep third. This is the way it's supposed to work. Unfortunately, in Madden 22 Ultimate Team, not only do they have to have the attributes, they also have to have the ability. So that's extremely important that you guys understand that. So now when we roll the tape, he's just going for that. He's running for it. Now look, regardless of what happens with the way that your players uh, you know, move around, if they have mid zone and they meet the criteria, they're probably going to jump the pass. With this one right here, you could see on the right side. Watch what happens. Look, look, look. You see? Oh well, this is for the. Uh, this is Sean Taylor's pick. Oh, I thought this was the other one that I have. The next one I show you is going to be, um, you know, Kyle Fuller. I believe he's going to be picking the ball off. But the reason I said to look at the right side, you see how my right side corner is actually playing as Cloud Flat. Do you guys see that? Like it's amazing, right? If you look at the right side, he's actually playing what he's supposed to play. So right away, my opponent is going to look away from that. Because typically, the Cloud Flats don't play like that. They'll just run inside, they'll be outside. He's playing it perfectly because he has the zone threshold. And not only that, he has the ability. Now look at Sean Taylor. He's in a cover two deep safety. For those of you guys that watch me, I change, I quick link, I hot route my defense. Like, I change up all the players like every single time so I keep my opponents off guard. So I could be running a cover three that's a cover two on, on one side. I could have man on one side and, and zone on the other. I could run a cover six. Like, I do a lot of different things. But it all tends to be what your opponent is trying to get away with in this game he was attacking me in the flat all game so i had to start zoning the players so the right and the left side they're actually playing their zones now look at the break on the ball the break that, that that's all mid zone the break on the ball right there with sean taylor he doesn't do that without mid zone he's not doing this without mid zone so if you have a sean taylor and you're like yo g he's still not playing defense 
He's not playing defense because although he has the zone coverage, threshold of 90, he just doesn't have the ability. Now, right here, this is what I wanted to show you guys. You see the way he's about to jump this? Just, just look at the way he's playing it. Now, this is a guy that's running bunch every single play. So what happens is a lot of these guys run bunch because everything gets open. It's a very, very difficult formation to, to defend because that bunch side, if the player knows what he's doing, there's so many different combinations you can do. But most players don't know how to really run bunch. They see pro players do it and they think they can do it, but it is, you know, for the most part, a system behind it. So you have to know the read. And because we were having so much difficulty playing the flat, yo, G. Maya, nobody plays the flat. What's going on? Yeah, they do. There he goes right there. Okay, now Kyle Fuller obviously meets the threshold, but that's two guys on that side. You know what the funny part about that is? He's in a cloud. He's not even in a hard flat. He's in a cloud. And he just jumps the hell out of it with two guys there. And, and that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. It's a big difference with the way the game works um, when you start doing things like that because it opens up a lot more. Now this one, I didn't clip, I didn't clip enough of it, but I put Antro a roll in the soft squat and he just threw it. But I, I should have did a 30 second clip, I did a 15 second. So now you just see the pick. But it's just a lot of, it's a lot more interceptions against different players that do different things and you have to be able to adjust your defense. So the next thing that you guys may ask is like, okay, Jemaya, you're doing clouds, you're doing soft squats, you got guys doing all these different things. The way that you guys are playing, it's so insane. Why are they playing like that? Like, what? why are they able to understand, you know, the zones and stuff like that? Let me explain something to you guys again. In all of these picks that you guys are seeing right now, I'm running a nickel defense and Chancellor's my user, right? I'm running a nickel defense where you could put the safeties in at sub linebacker and I'm just roaming the, the middle of the field. The outside players, you have to decide what your opponent is doing and what you have to do to stop them. You have to figure that out. I can't like be able to tell you exactly what's gonna happen in each game, but I can tell you that you're gonna have a lot more success you know, with the players, as long as they meet those certain attributes, you're gonna get those type of results. And this, these are game-changing plays. These are game-changing plays to where that was always a dot. Just throwing it right there, it's always a dot. But it's not anymore. Because we figured out what we need to do. So that, that right there, that all goes back to the fact that you have the players that are available to do it. Now, for those of you guys that are saying, yeah, Jemiah, bro, these packs of Grizzly, you know, you know I, I can't really afford it. Let me tell you something. I hate end cats, but you get two of them, all right, for playing uh, the challenges. I think I've only used one of um, one of them, because I, I, well, actually, I, maybe two. I quick sold some for training, but I think I have one end cat left for the uh, the campus heroes, right? So you can get these cards for free. You can get Antrail Roll for free by just playing the game. You know what I'm saying? I know it's an end cat. I know it sucks. You, you, listen, I've been there. I know exactly what you're saying. But all these players, although they're end cats, they're free. So a lot of these cards that you see on my team, you can also have for free, but you have to grind the game, okay? But you can't put them in the sets and they quick sell for less than nothing. And that's, you know, I got the other two that was part of the other promo uh, that currently came out uh, and I used the, I utilized those already. The ultimate kickoff promo, I utilized those as well. So it's very important that you guys understand you can build your team however you want. You know, I think this other guy, uh, J J uh, Javon Curse, he's also an NCAT. All right, so certain pieces that you can put on your squad. Oh, Kyle Fuller also is an end cat. We got a lot of end cats, bro. Like, dude, I, it, there's a lot of cats running around, dude. We got to get some, dude, what, what, do they, what do they do? Milk? Like, what are we getting these end cats? But they don't don't worry about it. Don't worry. EA Sports is like, look, we're going to give you the players, but that's all you're going to get. You're not getting anything else, and you're going to like it. And you're also going to shut up, too. I'm like, all right, EA, take me from the back out if you want to do it. But again, my purpose is making sure that you guys understand what's up and how this actually works. And I want to make sure that you guys know you can actually play defense right now in Madden 22. So go ahead, take a look at that. Make sure you guys have the right attributes out there. And then let me know. Give me some feedback. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. You enjoy your day. One love, y'all.